much in um, <coughs> my life. I see actually a uh, highlight like fact about prayer. Now we have to always remember to pray one for another. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> and it is um, you know, so important to, to you know, um, uh, I found something out that sometimes when <coughs> someone call you and probably talk to you for five minutes, then you need to call him back. Now probably the same time, but try call him back the next day because sometimes they they probably sense something in your voice that they realize that they can really, um, you know, talk to you at that time. And sometimes the, the, the whole thing is the, the next day you can actually talk. You know, because um, I tell you that the devil, as you realize in, um, in the pen of inspiration, or should I say throughout the scripture, and the pen of inspiration, he's not letting up. <coughs> We might think that he's letting up, but he's not letting up. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and let us not fool ourselves anymore. You know, and, um, the song actually helps us this morning to understand the power of prayer. And we'll go through the song with her for you and pray. Let us pray. The sermon today is the kingdom. The kingdom. Um, we read a scripture reading um, that actually highlight a lot of things about the kingdom and probably we never really get it but um, when you go back over it you will indeed really, really get it in the, the end of um, verse 19 it says but wisdom is justified and her, of her children which um SDA commentary uh, gives a whole lot about. A matter of fact, we have read the scripture reading already, and um, in leading us to um, what was actually said, um, you know, we, we get some more highlight, really, and um, <clears throat> that same part in um, Spirit, Spirit of Prophecy book 2 chapter 3 um, pages 48 and 49 um, that actually help us to understand what this um, statement here is um, telling us that we should really rest in Jesus you know um We need the Lord now more than ever. And I, and I begin in an extraordinary way today by reading the pen of inspiration about what we are about to get into, the kingdom. It says, it was the purpose of John to start and arouse the people and cause them to tremble because of their great wickedness. In simplicity and plainness, he pointed out the errors and crimes of men. A power attended his words and reluctant as the people were to hear the denunciation of their unholy lives, yet they could not resist his words. He flattered none, neither would he receive flattery of any. The people, as if with common consent, Come to him repenting and confessing their sins and were baptized of him in Jordan. <coughs> Kings and rulers came to the wilderness to hear the prophet and were interested and deeply convicted as he fearlessly pointed out their particular sins. His discernment of character and spiritual sight, read the purposes and arts of those who came to him. I read that again. This was John the Baptist. 
the forerunner of Christ. He says, is discernment of character and spiritual sight read the purposes and arts of those who came to him? And he fearlessly told both rich and poor, the honorable and the lowly, that without repentance of their sins and a thorough conversion, although they might claim to be righteous, they could not enjoy the favor of God and have part in the kingdom of the Messiah whose coming he announced. He says, in the spirit, with the power of Elijah, John denounced the corruptions of the Jews and raised his voice in reproving their prevailing sins. His discourse were plain, pointed, and convincing. Many were brought to repentance of their sins. And as evidence of their repentance, were baptized of, of him in Jordan. This was the preparatory work for the ministry of Christ. Many were convicted because of the plain truth uttered by this faithful prophet. But by rejecting the light, they became enshrouded in deeper darkness, so that they were fully prepared to turn from the evidences attending Jesus that he was the true Messiah. And we are seeing the same thing today. He says, as John looked forward to the ministry and miracles of Christ, he appealed to the people, saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He was successful in his ministry. Persons all around, high and low, rich and poor, submitted to the requirements of the prophet as necessary for them in order to participate in the kingdom he came to declare. Many of the scribes and Pharisees came to him confessing their sins and were baptized of him in Jordan. The confession made by the Pharisees astonished the prophet, for they had exalted themselves as better than other men, and had maintained a high opinion of their own piety and worthiness. As they sought to obtain remission of their sins and reveal the secrets of their lives, which had been covered from the eyes of men. The prophet was amazed. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees, Sadducees came to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who had warned you to flee from the rod to come, bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance, and think not to say within yourself, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, That God is able of these stones To raise up children unto Abraham. So, but wisdom is justified of our children. It, the Jews thought that because Abraham was their father, um, They had a special entry and John would say to them for I say unto you that God is able to rise is God is able of these stone to raise up children unto Abraham I hope we had this understanding it says that the old Jewish mission the old Jewish nation seems to be affected by the mission of John the threatenings of God on account of their sin repeated by the prophet for a time alarmed them john knew that they cherished the idea that because they were the seed of abraham they were securely established in the favor of god while 
their course of action was a board of him. Their conduct was, in many respects, even worse than that of the Eden nations to whom they felt so much superior. The scripture gives great outline and detailed illustration about the kingdom of heaven. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, the scripture tells us that we should seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. 6.33 But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And um, many times we go away um, not really understanding much of what really will be added unto us. And um, we put in our own little syllabus or whatever we want to put. We put them in because the scripture says all these things shall be added unto us. So today we're going to make it a little more clearer. And um, that we will understand the things that will be added unto us. In Luke chapter 12, chapter 12, 31 and 32, actually make it even simpler for us. That we do not go on to Matthew 6, 33 to find what we have just said. But we can say in, in Luke 12, 31, he said, and I read 32 also, it says, but rather, <coughs> am I going too fast? All right, let me slow down a little. Luke 12, 31 and 32. <coughs> Here it says, but rather, he said, if we read 27, all these things, do the nations of the world seek after? And your father know it that ye have need of these things. But rather, seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. And it never tell you what. He says, fear not, little flock. For if your father... For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Amen? Amen. We should, he, this, he will give you the kingdom. So we shouldn't fear. But I found something in Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. And uh, we could read from 29, 30 and 31. So we we'll read Mark 10, 30. 29, sorry, 30. And I would read 28 too, that we get a little more clarity and the, um, the things. Because something was being um, said um, in the upper text. Um, I pray that you note it and then you go back. Um, it says, 28 says, Then Peter began to say, based upon what Christ said, you know, when, you know, um, I wish I could have uh, gone further. He says, all right, I'll start from 28. There's nothing new that you have never read before. He said, Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left us, our brethren, our sisters, our father, our mother, our wife, our children, our lands, for my sake and the gospel. And this is what it says. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses and brethren and sisters, and mothers, and children, and lands with persecutions. 
When I saw that, I, 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 I said, what? And in the world to come, eternal life. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. We know that the disciples were not in want of anything and that they were persecuted heavily. We know that. And um, but we, but the, the, the psalm and the different part of the scripture tells us that he will deliver them, or deliver you and I out of you know, all they said um, about the godly. Those that live godly shall suffer persecution, but God will deliver you out of them all. Amen. Amen. And so we know. That when you seek the kingdom, people are going to come at you. And you don't have to worry about anything. He says, but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. And he gave you houses. So with the notion that you should be poor and you shouldn't have anything. And you, should, you know, we see in scripture here, if I'm, um, you know, with uh, my understanding that I'm having, that what he shall receive. Tell you what he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses and brethren and sisters. And so, you know, the Lord is blessing. He'll always bless. And his blessing will be seen. But part of it is persecution where we don't want to accept. But I'm saying to us today that those that live godly, um, we we'll suffer persecution. We we'll find that text in its entirety before we go too too far today. Amen? Amen. They that live godly, they that live godly. Let us not be afraid. <coughs> because we know that when we step on the dragon's tail, he's gonna spit fire. Mm. We know that when we step on the dragon's tail, he will spit fire. And if we didn't know that um, then, we better know it now. You know, and, um, and this is why we are in such a lax because nobody wants to step on the dragon's tail. Well, I shouldn't say that. A few men are stepping on the dragon's tail, and those who are supposed to help him, uh, help her, or him, they, they, we know that um, they, um, they, are, they are trying to destroy them. We have seen it, and we are seeing it now. You know, so um, they, as we talk about the topic, the kingdom, let us not realize that um, something nice is coming. Amen? 31 says, But many that are first shall be last, and last be first. The pen of his verse says, As some great light, some people you think was a were believers. Great light will be put out. Gone. Don't believe it anymore. Last, last time I talked about a man um, named Crozier. He was preaching about the Sabbath, but he never believed anything in the Sabbath. And after a while, he, he digressed and then began to preach propaganda. And so today, the Lord has allowed us to um, look on this topic a little closer. And I pray that um, we, we, we take a little notes and that we can actually um, go back you know, and um, you know, and, and, and um, go back over it because these are these are the things that actually, um, if you want to use, encourage us. I pour our near to the Lord when we actually studied something and then we go back. So I start over again by saying the Scripture gives great outline and detailed in, in, illustration about the kingdom of heaven. Centering upon chapter 13, so let us turn to Matthew chapter 13 for a little while. <clears throat> In chapter 13, we see our, you know, we have seen Every and every concentration of what the kingdom of heaven really, really is. Christ Jesus is opening up 
the word to us in the 13th chapter of Matthew. Telling us that the kingdom of heaven <coughs> is a mysterious outline. And we will find out that um, the same chapter that we have read in Matthew 11. I'm not going too fast. Give us even clear detail. Have why it is a mystery and in other chapters too we will actually see the same another part of the gospels we will, we will actually see but um in chapter 13 verse 11 We get another, let, let's take a clearer picture here. 13.11 says, He answered and said unto them, Because it's given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Matthew 11 verse 13, as we, we, I, look, I said just now, says, for all the prophets, for, for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. So prophecy is our foundation. Verse 12 tells us that the kingdom of heaven, as Brother Bertram read, Suffer it violence. And I want you to be careful at the end of it. And the violent. If you look again, it didn't say violence in my Bible. What did it say in your Bible? And the violent. Take it by force. I, I, I pause here, not because I don't want to actually talk, but to, to tell you that there are wicked people, the violent, talking the violent. The violent we're talking about, wicked people now, will take it by force. And so we, we know that we will suffer persecution. You know, last week's sermon, I, I still keep hearing myself over and over in, um, in, in, in Second Chronicles um, 19, you know, and, um, and verse 2, where, according to my understanding, Jehu, the son of Anani, the seer went out to meet Josephus, and it was now warm welcome. And said to King Josephus, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that ate the Lord? And what comes after, I said, therefore, is wrought upon thee from before the Lord. You should die for this. That's what the scripture is saying. Many times we go out of our way to help the ungodly. And many times we are more in love with them that hate the Lord than are those who love the Lord, who know love the Lord. 
He hasn't changed. Because the word is still before that, therefore is wrought upon you, upon thee from before the Lord. And it doesn't mean that it's Joseph at alone. The scripture is for our, for our, admission, our admonition. But thank God. He said in verse 3, he said, Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee. And this is what saved Joseph, the, the good things found in thee. What was the good things? In that thou art taken away the groves out of the land, and art prepared thine heart to seek God. Prepare your heart to seek God. And I'm, and I'm saying to Ibeck, Brother Bertram, Clover, and I'm saying it yet again to myself, you, that you got to make proper, proper, proper preparation in your heart to seek God. Can I say that again? We all have to make proper preparation in our heart to seek God. Make something special. Make a commitment to seek God. And you're going to see the difference that it makes in our lives. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violent take it. Chapter 13, sorry. Verse 24. Am I at the right place? Yes. Starting from verse. See, we are on seven different occasions. We see the description of what the kingdom of heaven is like now. Verse 24 tells us that another parable put ye forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a man. Are we there? Mm -hmm. <coughs> And seven different occasions, and this is what makes it special. And seven different occasions, the Bible tells us, the Holy Scripture tells us what the kingdom of heaven is like man to. And the first one is likened unto a man, not a lazy man. He says, like man to a man which sowed good seeds in his field. When we would have turned to the second one, we find the second one in the same chapter, 13, verse 31. I'm trying here to, to tr list all seven and it, it's different different places in Matthew 13 so we are centering upon our minds upon 13 for now so 13 31 say another parable put ye forth unto them saying the kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field. I don't know if I can help with it this, this later, but uh, many times they say a grain and a seed is two different things. A grain cannot be a seed and a seed cannot be a grain, but the Bible tells me that they are wrong. Because the kingdom of heaven is like to a grain, one grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. That's 31, number two. Number three, we go to verse 33. And it says, another parable spake he unto them. We are talking about what Jesus is saying. 
the Son of God is saying, the kingdom of heaven is like unto, uh, unto leaven, which a woman took. Uh, and we see the change here. From man to woman. So is that a one, is that a one party thing this is? I, I'm telling you the, the, the scripture, the word of God is so powerful. It says, the kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven which a woman took and ate in three measures of meal till the all was leavened. This is, for me, this is wonderful. Sometimes we hear people saying that the Bible is um, a man, but uh, it's, it's just for man. I don't talk about man. But um, when you study these seven, <coughs> you realize that that argument holds nothing. Number four, we go to 41. But before we run off to 41, I want you to look on something here. It says in verse 34, Right below, it says, All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them. We, we already read already the reason why, you know, you've got to be a disciple of Christ to really understand. And sometimes you hear these people on um, the radio waves um, giving um, psychological statement of what this is and what that is. If you are not a disciple of Christ, you, you, you know, you know, most of them, they are not. So they are not saying anything. They are just coming up with their own one. So that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. A lot of things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. So then Jesus sent the multitude away and went to the house. And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tears of the field. We're not going to go there. So let us go to 44, where number 4 is being stated. And this is what number 4, number four says. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure. It in a field. The which when a man had found, he hided it. And for joy thereof, go it and sell it all that he had and buy it the field. So number one, we have a man. Number two, we have a grain. Number three, we have leaven. Number four, we have treasure. And then number five, which is found in verse 45, it comes to a merchant man. So it begins to change now. 45, in my other Bible, it says the pearl of great price. It says again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. That is why we said we have to seek God. You, you, you need to say it out in your prayer. Telling the Lord that we are seeking you, Lord. We need to cry aloud. We are seeking you because Daniel did it. And the angels were pleased. And so we want to break for three minutes just to utter this prayer. <coughs> at number five, the merchant man says again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking good of earth, who when he had found 
one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. The number six, we go to 47. We see 47 tells us, number six. It says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. Which when it was full, he drew it to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. So, so shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. They shall be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Number seven, we see it begins at 51. So Jesus said unto them, Have ye understood all these things? And they said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then said he unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed under the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. We um, I've read and I've tried to list all seven to show you and we know in, in scripture when we have come across something seven it comes with more a little more power it's because it says seven is completeness so we cannot follow these seven and be lost amen, amen. if we follow them according to the scripture it says in um in the scripture reading, verse 19, remember where the scripture reading is taken from, right? Mm -hmm. 11 and verse 19. And I had actually gone ahead and read this before, and um, but I just want to say it over again, and I'm just going to tell you exactly where to go and find it. I'm not going to read it over again in that manner, really. I hope you're not upset. We can actually go back over it um, later on if you have questions in it that you actually want to um, address. Um, which I was trying to find in there. Yeah, that leaf. It would be godly. I can't remember exactly where it is. Um, we will get it anyway. Verse 19 says, The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, The older man, gluttonous, and a wine beaver a friend of publican and sinners. Um, but wisdom is justified of our children. That's why I read that long passage in the pen of inspiration about what that really means, that the Lord will raise up stones to Abraham in children, raise, raise up men like us, men and women and boys and girls, to actually um, present the gospel. Um, we, not be, we don't need, need to be afraid. They say the highlight of the seven, the 
what, what I want to tell you actually after reading verse and where we found this is um, um, book two of Spirit of Prophecy. Um, I guess I didn't finish this morning and um, I was clear about certain things, so I didn't, uh, you know, we actually waste the ink then. You know, but um, I think I left my piece. So if you write um, Spirit of Prophecy, book two, pages 48 and 49, you're going to get a hold of here about the meaning of <coughs> wisdom is justified of our children. She, she, um, and then if you go into the SDA commentary and um, Luke 11, you'll get more information again. <coughs> you know, and this is what it's all about. The SDA commentary and um, Luke 11, you get a lot of information. And, and um, book two, Spirit of Prophecy, pages 48 and 49. You will get some more understanding because sometimes we talk about the stones will cry out. Okay. The stones will cry out. Um, I don't think. Um, I don't think this was the right thing. You know, there's something wrong. That's pretty wrong. And that's why I left it. Um, The seven mysteries has laid an anchor of belief and obedience to all who believe in Jesus Christ. These seven parables are these seven statements made by Christ. Is an anchor for those who obey the word of God and those who believe. The inspiration of Paul written as Holy Scripture in 2 Corinthians 11 as we turn. Second Corinthians 11, because many times we, we um, are not understanding that the Lord is not giving us any hard mathematics, any hard English. He's not giving us anything to frighten us because he wants us to, want us to come to him. And many times people are afraid of the, the Bible. And he, I don't want you to be afraid of the Bible. Because knowledge is power. And when you know, it is better for you. Better for all of us. So here, Paul, here, here the inspiration of Paul was, is appealing to us. It says, Oh to God, you could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. Because a lot of people wasn't probably understanding. I can't believe how simple it was. So if I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have exposed you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But he's used the word here. But I fear, verse 3, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. And I stop here. I want to tell us that um, the Lord is doing everything to save us. Everything. And many times we do not believe this. 
And uh, we talk about presumption, and we talk about superstition, and we talk about different, different stuff, but we must educate our mind to believe the Word of God. When we would have read 1st, 2nd Corinthians 11, 1 to 3, this would have taken us back to the Garden of Eden. And many times we are here blaming Eve and blaming Adam, blaming the serpent, and we blame all different things. But are we really better? Would we, would we have done better? Today the scripture, the word of God, is appealing to us. Are we obeying? We can talk all the one about Adam and Eve. We are in a predicament. And we know that sin is contagious. And the only way we get the healing is by accepting Christ and obeying Him and staying close to Him and letting Him be our Lord and Savior. It says that we should pray and ask the Lord to keep our soul. Give it to him because we can't keep it. Because we always do a lot of things that is wrong. But by keeping it, by our daily prayer and our commitment, by our daily, I said the word daily. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> this is really, really helping us to understand how simply things can appear. And this is when we compromise, believe it or not. You know, we compromise when things are simple and, um, <laughs> and we, this is when we begin to see a fish as a serpent. We begin to make our own conspiracy. And then we begin to lean our own understanding and become blind to the things of God. He's just helping us. When we read the scripture and the judges, you know, sometimes you can't really, really, the Lord raise up a man with so much strength. And yet, you know, even though the scripture tells us that whatever happened, it was purposed by God. But it is not telling us not to look and see how people in other words, they couldn't understand the strength of Samson. They couldn't understand the visions of Gideon. And they know that it was God who, who were doing all this. And the same God will continue to do for us if we obey and do His will. Amen. So we cannot become blind and lean to our own understanding and become blind again and fall over a precipice. But we could become blind if we begin to take God for granted and then we know that we're going to be just like the children of Israel when they become blind and find themselves in captivity. Thirteen, ten, and eleven says that um, and the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he never hid it, he told them. He says, He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Something special is given to us that we should understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it is not given. And so when people might have jumped in up and said, what mysteries are in secret or whatever, them, once you're a disciple of God, you get a jump, you get a head start, so to speak. Matthew 25, 14 and 15. A 
as I close. <clears throat> it says, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man. This is very much, you know. The Lord is doing everything. When, when you should have gone through much, you, you know, um, you'd have seen more of the kingdom of heaven. The Lord is making it easy for us to understand. But as I said earlier, I was centering on 13. Chapter 13, God gives seven clear details. Matthew 25 says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servant and delivered them, and delivered unto them his goods. 15 says, And unto one he gave talents. And we know about the talent story. And we know what happened to the one who received one, he buried it. But I'm saying to us today, we might think that we do not have a platform. We might think that we, we, we can't do anything, but that's, do not let the devil fool you. That is a lie. The Lord has given every man who come to him a platform to tell others about him. Sometimes we might say we are shy, but ask the Lord to show you. Your platform. We might see that we don't. We might we, we might say we don't have much. We can't talk. But so was Jeremiah. So was Moses. You know, we, we say all these things. But the truth is, what really matters, tell it anyhow. Don't worry about your, 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 your grammar. If I was worried about my grammar, I wouldn't be standing here. But the truth must be told. The Lord will make the correction in the minds of those who really, really want to find Him. Because we see the mountain clearer. In our journey, just like Abraham, he said he traveled a good while before he could see the mountain that was shown to him in the vision where he should sacrifice his son. As we do more for the Lord, we gain more strength, we gain more knowledge, and you, be, you become wiser as we do it. So that's why I'm saying as we come, as we, you know, as we journey as we long, even though many people who might have watched this on, the, on YouTube might have gone in this and see the in verse 14, that it was the kingdom of heaven is written in I, is written in italics, and we jump ready to say that it is not in the original writing. We know that, but as a man traveling into a far country, that's who we are. And the songwriter help us to say, just over the mountain, in the promised land, there is a holy city built by God on hand. I pray that as we continue to follow the teachings of the gospel, seeking the Lord, that we will find the hidden treasure because we are 
shot him in the footsteps of our Savior.